very good morning to everybody on behalf of bar council of maharashtra and goa i welcome all the dignitaries on the dais of the dais honorable judges of the bombay high court additional solicitor general of india advocate general of maharashtra and all the senior advocates who have been kind enough to accept our invitation and to grace this special occasion of felicitation function of honorable justice shri dipankar datta judge supreme court of india friends uh, it, it is a participant it is a very great honor that you have created this occasion i now request uh, before commencing the function bar council of maharashtra and goa has made a tradition that any function has to be preceded by the homage to the preamble or constitution of india so i request the dignitaries on the dais to pay homage to constitution of india by offering flowers Thank you, honourable dignitaries. Uh, now I request our chairman, Bar Council of Maharashtra and Goa, Advocate Vivekanand Ghatke, sir, to welcome the dignitaries with a welcome address. साधु संत येती घरा तोच दिवाळी दसरा द तसा पाप आ गे ओकसा पा गे साथ मे बारिश लेके आ गे तो हमारे यहाँ आज दसरा भी है और दिवाळी भी है ऑनरेबल जस्टिस अभय ओक जी ऑनरेबल जस्टिस दीपांकर दत्ता जी ऑनरेबल जस्टिस नितिन जामदार जी ऑनरेबल एडिसर सॉलिसिटर जनरल ऑफ इंडिया अनिल सिंह जी ऑनरेबल बीरेंद्र शराब जी ऑनरेबल मदन कुमार मिश्रा जी चेयरमैन बी सी आई ऑनरेबल एस प्रभाकरन जी ऑनरेबल अपूर्व शर्मा जी ऑनरेबल देवी प्रसाद दाल ऑनरेबल प्रशांत कुमार सिंह ऑनरेबल दिलीप पटेल ऑनरेबल दिलीप प्रकाश शर्मा ऑनरेबल मनोज कुमार ऑनरेबल शै शैलेन्द्र दुबे ऑनरेबल प्रताप सिंह ऑनरेबल सुरेश चंद्र ऑनरेबल श्रीनाथ त्रिपाठी ऑनरेबल रेमी रेड्डी ऑनरेबल डी के शर्मा ऑनरेबल अमित वैद 
ऑनरेबल जैन जय भावे दत्ता साहब आपके लिए तो बी पूरा आया है तो पूरा इंडिया आज इधर है ऐसा समझ सकते हैं सो दिस इज फिलिसिटेशन ऑन बिहॉफ ऑफ ऑल ओ इंडिया सर दी वाई दिस फिलिसिटेशन आई थिंक दी ओनली वन रीजन इज मोर देन सफिशियंट वाई दिस दिस फिलिसिटेशन डूरिंग दी कोविड पीरियड सर the honorable datta saheb has taken much care of the entire maharashtra and he worked as a karta of a joint family his contribution in a covid period is tremendous and because of that sir this is the one of the reason for your felicitation i will not take more time because sir uh, honorable uh, bci member jay bhave sir will talk about the activities of the bar council of maharashtra and goa sir but sir something i have to address here तैतीस साल पहले मैं जब कोर्ट में गया था पहले दिन उस दिन का फीलिंग और आज का फीलिंग एक ही है मेरे ऊपर बहुत दबाव था मैं कुछ कर सकता हूँ या नहीं कर सकता हूँ आप जब 2020 में कोल्हापुर आए थे तो मैं आपको मिलने आया था आप सर्किट हाउस में थे मैं गया अंदर दो चार लोग बैठे थे मैंने आपको देखा नहीं था मैंने मैं आपको पहचानता नहीं था तो आप खड़े हो गए और बोले यस आई एम चीफ जस्टिस और मैं लगता नहीं ना ऐसे बोले थे आज सर आई एम चेयरमैन ऑफ बार काउंसिल ऑफ महाराष्ट्र में लगता नहीं ना सर <laughs> सवेरे मैं जब आया यहाँ ट्रायल के लिए मैं तो यहाँ यहाँ से एड्रेस करूँगा खड़ा रह गया तो ये बड़ा था मैंने बोला अरे इधर कुछ रखो <laughs> सिर्फ दत्ता साहब की तरफ मत देखो मेरा कभी कुछ सुनो <laughs> तो इधर कुछ रखा है जो सुषमा अंदर जी लगते है वैसा मैं सर जहाँ प्रैक्टिस करता हूँ वो डिस्ट्रिक्ट कोर्ट में प्रैक्टिस करता हूँ ये सब मेरे को नया है ऐसा सब ब्लेजर वाला लोग ब्लेजर वाला कार्यक्रम हमारे यहाँ सब नया है हमारे गांव में अभी भी सात दिन के बाद पीने का पानी आता है फिर भी मैं एक अपॉर्चुनिटी लूँगा क्योंकि इन्होंने मेरे को दस मिनट दिए है अभी तो दो मिनट ही हुए हैं नौ मिनट में ख़त्म करूँगा आप जब कोल्हापुर आए थे तो ऐसा माहौल था कि हमारी कुछ डिमांड्स है मैं उसके उसके बारे में बाद, बाद में बोलूँगा लेकिन एक है आपने मैं जब यहाँ मुंबई में आपसे मिला तो आपने एक लेटर दे दिया मेरे को दैट दी योर डिमांड विल बी कंसिडर्ड आफ्टर दी मीटिंग विद दी चीफ मस्ट चीफ मिनिस्टर ऑफ महाराष्ट्र एंड गोवा तो मैंने सुना ठीक है अच्छा है मैं उधर गया उधर गया तो बहुत सारे लोग थे एक तो चिल्ला रहा था काय थे डोंगार काय थी झाड़ी काय थे हटेल मैंने सोचा गलत आदमी से मिल रहा हूँ दूसरे से मिलता हूँ दूसरे के पास गया तो वो बोल रहा था मैं कारतूस मैं फारतूस नहीं मैं कारतूस हूँ तीसरे के पास गया वो बोला मैं ढेर नहीं मैं शेर हूँ तो सोचा चौथे के पास जाते हैं तो बोलते हैं भाकरी करपली भाकरी परतली तो मैं आपसे विनती करता हूँ आप किसी भी गवर्नमेंट के पास हमको मच भेजो आप जो भी करना है आप ही करो वीरेंद्र सराब जी है अनिल सिंह जी है अनिल सिंह जी तो हमारे बार काउंसिल के हेड है सराब जी तो अभी अभी आए हैं देखेंगे कैसा उनके साथ जनता है लेकिन जमेगा दूसरा सवेरे सब बी सी मेंबर बैठे थे हम भी बैठे थे तो इंक्वायरी चल रही थी तो प्रॉब्लम आता है बी सी मेंबर इंक्वायरी के लिए आता है और मेरे गांव का कोई एडवोकेट उधर आता है वो मराठी में बोलता है इनको मराठी समझता नहीं उसको हिंदी आता नहीं उसको अंग्रेजी आता नहीं ये जो भाषा का जो बैरियर है वो बहुत बड़ा बैरियर है ऐसा मेरे को लगता है थोड़स लिहन आल हो सापड़े ना जाए ओक साहब हर तो मैं बरस वाला भेट लो दोन हजार नौ साली थे कोलहापुर आए होते मेडिशन सेंटर सुरू के लिए मेडिशन सेंटर सुरू रह गे आठ दा वर्ष ओक साहब आम खूब नाराज है पी हाँ जाहिर कार्यक्रम ओक साहब अपने संगत 
कि आप सूचने नर आम्मी थोड़े सुधारलो आप सूचने नर आम एक ही बंद नहीं कि एक ही एजिटेशन नहीं पन प्रॉब्लम आला है कि आई घर जेवायला वाड़ नहीं आनी बाप भी, भीक मगू दी नहीं आम्मी कराए क्या बयाच गोष्ट वास्तविक पहुन बोलवाय मोटा कार्यक्रम कराएगा मोठे बुके दिन काम संगाइच ये मैं आवड़ नहीं पेवटी नहीं लाइज मैं नहीं वाटत कि मजा आयुष्या पुनः एकदा अशा स्वरूप कार्यक्रम घड़ेल ऐकनेस अपन सर्व आल इतक मोटा प्रमाण न्यायाधीशांसमोर आसण तैंसमोर बोलण हे का स्वप्न आता कि अशा अचानक घटना घड़ता कि ऐक्सिडेंट घड़ो तशा प्रकार की घटना ही मजे आयुष्या है माला देखी महती नहीं कि यानी माला का बार काउंसिल चेयरमन के दूसरी गोष्ट हा कोट प्रेमाइसेस कि कोट चेम्बर बाहर एक मोट जग है आ दुर्दवान जगाम का अपनेपर्यंत पोचत नहीं कारण का मेरा महती नहीं पन बच गोषी अपनेपर्य पोचत नहीं अर्निश कुमार जजमेंट आल सगी सगे खुश जाए पे अर्निश कुमार जजमेंट का सगत जास्त गैरफायदा घायल तो पोलिस यंत्र कुछ गुनियामदे आना मना ये अट्टा कार्य मना चाहिए तो घाबर जो तेला महती नहीं कि हा यना अटक करू शक नहीं तो जजमेंट का खूब गैरफायदा जा दूसर उपल से जजमेंट आल प्रीवंस कमिटी आली नहीं आम प्रश्न पड़तो कि आम्मी कराए तो क्या कराए संप तो कराए नहीं काम तो जाएगा पाजे मजे तो दाबन मुख्या मार है अत्यंत अवगढ़ परिस्थित है मजा शहरा मध्य मजा गावा आठ से दा हज़ार रुपया मध्य चार मनसांच कुटुंब चालवे ऐंशी टक्के कुटुंब है ये आम खूब नवीन है ये मुंबई तो एकदम नवीन है ओक साहब अपन अपनी नाराजी मी माफी मगतो अपनी कि अपनी नाराजी थोड़ी दूर जाए कारण आम्मी दा वर्षा मे अतिशय चांगल काम के लिए तुम्हें डिस्पोजल से बगित तो कोलहापुर प्रचंड डिस्पोजल आम्मी दिल है आसते कि सग चाल नवीन एना पीढ़ी सा नवीन जे टैलेंट आल क्या है आम्क भरपूर नवीन टैलेंट आरच वा अनेक कार्यक्रम यावर चर्चा देखी जाए कि हाफ बेकड ऐडवोकेट्स आए मान्य है कारण जी यंत्र ऐडवोकेट बनवते ते पूर्ण बनवत नहीं क्या जय बाबे साहब प्रयत्नान कि कष्टान जे हाफ बेकड़ आए आम्मी फूल बेकड़ कराए प्रयत्न करो फूल बेक करता अपने सर्वान सा सहभाग है अपन सगैठिका ये लेक्चर्स देता पुनः एकदा आप या महाराष्ट्र दत्ता साहब आपने यहाँ जो भी काम किया वो बहुत अच्छा काम किया आपकी वजह से कोविड में हमारे छोटे छोटे गांव में भी जिनको ज़रूरत थी उनको न्याय मिला आपके लिए मैं दुआ करता हूँ कि आप जितना बड़े हो सकते हो तो बड़े हो जाओ और जो भी मैंने अभी कहा ये इसलिए कहा कि अभी किसी के पास भी कोई भी सुनने के लिए टाइम देने वाला एजेंसी नहीं है अभी जो भी है बचा है तो वो सिर्फ आप है तो मैं ये विनती करूँगा कि जो रूरल एरिया से आते हैं जो रूरल एरिया के जो प्रॉब्लम्स है उनको इनके ऊपर ध्यान देने का है तो आपको बहुत नीचे 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 तक देखना पड़ेगा जरूर आपके पास उतना टाइम नहीं रहेगा लेकिन मैं दुआ करूँगा कि जो बोला था बाबा साहेब आंबेडकर साहब ने कि दुनिया के सबसे पिछले आदमी का कुछ देखना चाहिए मी ज्या शहर आलो क्या शहरा मदे एखादी गोष्ट चुकली आल आम ची चुके देखी तो अपन तोठा मना माफ कराव मैं मनेन पुनः एकदा मजा सर्व बार काउंसिलम सहका आभार मानतो कि माला ये डायस उपलब्ध करूँ दिल
माझ्या आयुष्यातल्या चेअरमन पदाच्या निवडीनंतर पहिलाच अशा स्वरूपाचा कार्यक्रम आहे असा कार्यक्रम होईल असं मला वाटलं नव्हतं पण मी सर्व बी सी आय मेंबर्सचं आभार मानतो की आपण मला या ठिकाणी संधी दिली नऊ मिनटं झालेले आहेत आपण टाईम पाळला पाहिजे जय महाराष्ट्र थँक यू ऑनरेबल चेअरमॅन फॉर द वेलकम ॲड्रेस विच वॉज स्टेट फ्रॉम द हार्ट now bar council of maharashtra and goa as a token of love appreciation and gratitude to the dignitaries who have spared their valuable time and remain present would like to felicitate the dignitaries with a floral bouquet and a memento i request uh, chairman bar council of maharashtra and goa vivekanand gadge sir to welcome our chief guest honorable justice abhay oak sir with a bouquet of flowers and memento now i request our vice chairman bar council of maharashtra and goa dr uday varanjikar sir to welcome honorable justice dipankar datta sir with a bouquet of flowers and memento now i request uh, advocate jain jabave sir member bar council of maharashtra bar council of india to welcome honorable justice nitin acting chief justice of bombay high court nitin zamdar sir with a bouquet of flower and memento I request uh, Milind Patil, member bar council of Maharashtra and Goa, former chairman, to welcome additional solicitor general of India, Shri Anil Singh sir, with a bouquet of flower and memento. I request Advocate Sangaram uh, Desai sir to welcome Dr. Birendra Saraf, Advocate General of Maharashtra, with a bouquet of flowers and memento. I request. Uh, Advocate Subhash Ghatke sir to welcome Shri Manan Kumar Mishra, Chairman Bar Council of India with a bouquet of flower and memento. we have been fortunate to have uh, mrs datta with us i request uh, honorable jagram desai sir member bar council of maharashtra and goa to felicitate uh, mrs datta with a floral bouquet and a memento Bar Council of Maharashtra and Goa, during his welcome address, has stated that the representative from Bar Council of all over of India are present to welcome and felicitate our uh, Honorable Justice Dipanga Datta. So, without taking much time, I 
we bar council of maharashtra and goa would like to felicitate the members of bar council of india who have taken the valuable time and remain present so i first request uh, as prabhakaran vice chairman bar council of india representing the state of tamil nadu senior council practicing in madras high court and request kajanan uh, chavan sir to felicitate shri s prabhakaran ji I request Advocate Vidhi Vidhi Salukhe, Member Bar Council of Maharashtra and Goa, to felicitate Apurva Sharma, representing the st state of Guwahati, Senior Council practicing in Guwahati High Court. <coughs> I request Advocate Ashish Deshmukh sir, member Bar Council of Maharashtra and Goa to felicitate Devi Prasad Dal, Senior Council practicing Odisha High Court, representing the state of Odisha. I request Advocate Harshad Nimbalkar sir, member Bar Council of Maharashtra and Goa to felicitate uh, Dilip Patel sir from state of Gujarat practicing in district court Rajat, Rajkot. I request Advocate Rajendra Umap sir, member Bar Council of Maharashtra and Goa to felicitate Manoj Kumar and Advocate, Advocate, Additional Advocate General of Kerala practicing in High Court of Kerala. I request Advocate Asif Kurishi sir, member Bar Council of Maharashtra and Goa to welcome Shri Salendra Dubeji, a senior counsel representing the state of Chhattisgarh. I request Ashish Deshmukh sir, to welcome Suresh Chandra Srimali, representing the state of Rajasthan. I request I request Advocate A.U. Pathan, member Bar Council of Maharashtra and Goa, to welcome <coughs> Shri Sheena Tripathi, member Uttar Pradesh, Bar Council of India, practicing in District Court, Varanasi. I I request Advocate Amol Savan, Member Bar Council of Maharashtra and Goa, to welcome uh, Shri A. Rami Reddy, representing the state of Andhra Pradesh, practicing in District Court Anantapuram. I, I request uh, our Vice Chairman Dr. Uday Varunjikar sir to welcome Honorable D.K. Sharma, Senior Counsel, practicing in Uttara High Court.
I request uh, Sri Sangam Desai sir, member Bar Council of Maharashtra and Goa to welcome Dr. Amit Ved, practicing High Court Shimla representing the state of Himachal Pradesh. Honorable dignities. Now, friend, we proceed and our very own chair, uh, member of Bar Council of Maharashtra and Goa, who is representing Bar Council of Maharashtra and Goa at, at Bar Council of India, Sri Jay Jabhave, sir, to please deliver introductory speech. All dignitary present on dais. And also present of the dais. I first of all welcome all of you for this felicitation function of the former Chief Justice of a Bombay High Court, who not only made an impact on the system, but who make an impact on the minds of the bar and bench. And therefore, we consider it as our duty to make a felicitation and therefore first of all I welcome all of you in this very important function of the Bar Council of Maharashtra and Goa. The chief guest of today's function, our guide, our mentor and who has proved to be by his own work as a judge, as a Adunik Ram Shastri, not of the Maharashtra, but of an uh, entire country. Honorable Justice Abhay Oak, <laughs> Judge, Supreme Court of India. Honorable Mr. Justice Dipankar Datta Sahib, former Chief Justice of a Bombay High Court and the Judge, Supreme Court of India. Honorable Mr. Justice Nitin Zamdar, the Acting Chief Justice of a Bombay High Court, Honorable Sri Anil Singh, our brother of the entire Bar Council, additional Solicitor General of India, Honorable Dr. Birendra Saraf, the backbone, the ex officio member and the Advocate General of the State of Maharashtra, Honorable Mrs. Datta, the leader of the nations, Honorable Sri Manan Kumar Mishra, Chairman Bar Council of India, Honorable S. Prabhakaran, the Vice Chairman of the Bar Council of India, one representing North and another representing South, and both the leader representing entire country, and supported by all my colleagues of the Bar Council of India, the Chairman of the Executive Committee, Sri Apurva Kumar Sharma, coming from a very important place for the Maharashtra, Guwahati. <laughs> and the entire members of the Bar Council from the different parts of the country, my own Chairman, Vice Chairman, and the members of the Bar Council. All the Honorable Judges of the Bombay High Court, all the senior councils, the former Advocate General Sri Dariyas Khambata Sahib and also the former Advocate General and our, another big brother Ashutosh Kumbakoni, all my dear Advocate friends. It is a bit late to have this felicitation function. The reasons are many, but the main reason is that we had, we, there was something in our mind to have a different type of a felicitation in a very big, large scale at some public function for Honorable Dipankar Datta. Because it's not only the felicitation of a former Chief Justice. I will explain in my speech how the impact has been made by his work on the minds of the advocates of this 
state of Maharashtra and Goa because he became a chief justice of a Bombay High Court in a very crucial period. We all know he, during the COVID, after March 2020, he was appointed as the chief justice of a Bombay High Court. And right from joining of the post, he traveled to car from right from Calcutta to Mumbai. Was, was first of all appreciated for by all the citizens of this state when the person was not was having a uh, some apprehension in his mind to travel out of his house. Honorable Dipankar Datta Sahib traveled from Calcutta to Mumbai and he joined his position as the Chief Justice of a Bombay High Court. <laughs> this first incident has made a lot of impact on the minds of the judges of a Bombay High Court, the lower judiciary and also the advocates and the citizens which has given a first confidence that out of this natural calamity we will have to fight out the matter now. And I will say that if in Maharashtra, if this confidence to this entire state has been given by some of the person, Justice Dipankar Datta is one of the important person who has raised this confidence. <laughs> then came the affected work of the courts. Till May, we, we all were in an, under the impact, May 2020, and then the discussion started that we can't close down the courts. On one side, Honorable Justice Abhay Oak in the Karnatak, as a Chief Justice of the Karnatak High Court, started functioning differently. We all know the way he worked, he had a shamiana for filing and so many schemes by giving a confidence to the lawyers and litigants, he started there. And Honorable Justice Dipankar Datta then started conducting one by one meeting. Initially on virtual mode, then physically. At least I have attended five to six meetings on behalf of a Bar Council of India. And I must tell frankly, that conversation in that entire meetings, many senior members of the bar, the office bearer of the various high court are there. We as a bar councillors, four or five members used to have that meetings. And he gave us a confidence, not as a, not as a chief justice, but as a guardian of the family. A very familiar dialogue, raising confidence and pushing the, the advocates particularly, the old advocates, the senior advocates, and then other advocates to start the work. And I'm sure that if the ranking of working during the COVID period is calculated in this country during any period of history, Bombay High Court will have an important position with all, keeping all the apprehension away. We worked in that COVID period and we were successful only and only because of the leadership which Justice Dipankar Datta has given. So, this is the one important aspect which has made an impact on the advocate fraternity. We can also see the work he has done as an admi on an administrative side for consideration of the all difficulties of the brother judges. They tell us, in fact, it was inquired by some of the honorable judges that you have delayed the felicitation. He said, yes, sir. But the way that entire administrative side has been handled by Honorable Deepankar Datta Sahib as the Chief Justice is really admirable. His judgments, his administrative orders are there. It shows quite good consideration for the bar. As a representative of the Bar Council, I am there for near about 20 years. And two Chief Justice of a Bombay High Court has made a real impact in these 20 years. One was Justice Mohit Shah and another is none other than, than Dipankar Datta Sahib. <laughs> His all administrative orders 
are full of the administrative skills. Fitness is there. I know many Bombay Bar people are sitting here when the timing from 11 to 10.30 was there, consideration there. A strict view has been taken by the Pankar Dutta Sahib that in the interest of litigation and in the interest of the litigants, it will be 10.30. I have taken a decision. Till I am there, it will not be changed. That was his strictness. Also, his judgments speaks themselves. The way he has tackled with the issues involving many political social issues, they all are before us. And I did not make an analysis of, for that because many stalwarts are there. We all of you, Bombay Bar and the judiciary, know how it has been handled. As far as the Bar Council function is concerned, we have a very good dialogue with Honorable Justice Dipankar Datta. During the COVID period only, under his leadership and with the guidance of Justice Abhay Oksar, we started a basic legal education program, which is made for the training to the young advocates. Recently, in a division bench of a five judges in the Supreme Court, the concern has been shown by the Supreme Court that half baked law students are becoming a lawyer. They are not fit to take up the profession and it's a responsibility of a bar council. Audible Manan Kumar Mishra and my all colleagues from the Bar Council of India are working very hard. We know this is the reality. There is a some sort of a deficiency in a legal education. Legal education is not making the perfect professionals. And we are trying to correct. Under the leadership of Manan Kumar Mishraji, we have started a law university, international law university at Goa, with the guidance of Honorable Justice uh, Bhushan Gawai sir and Surya Khan Sahib. Also now the Justice P.V. Narsimha sir is the chancellor of that university. We are trying to do. But this activity which is in a country initiated by the Bar Council of Maharashtra and Goa to start the training program. A new shape was given to this training program under the name of the Basic Legal Education Program, where eight days training program will be given to every new coming enrolled advocates. And that was, of course, inaugurated by the Honorable Justice Abhay Oak. And it was uh, the chief guest of the function was Honorable Justice Dipankar Datta Sahib. We published the literature and many programs of the training, the seminars, the conferences had been conducted in his presence. In a recent time, before going to Supreme Court, he has addressed to the huge gathering of the State Lawyers Conference at Aurangabad. And he has made his vision clear. What he expects from the lawyers, very frankly, he has told to the thousands and thousands of lawyers. On the same time, what is the role of the judge, what is the responsibility of the judge, he has also explained it. So he is one of the, he can be one of the real visionary of this country who can perfectly give the vision about the role of the bar, role of the bench and the relationship between these two uh, systems which, which should carry out, carry out properly the functioning of the judicial system. Friends, about every judge and about every advocate. There may not be a uniform opinion that yes, he is correct in this way, his, his, his judgments are correct, his administrative orders are correct. There may be a divergent opinion. And in a similar fashion, I can, I can see here after in my own experience of last 37 years in a profession, that this always happens. Exception may be there like Justice Abhay Oak. Nobody can have a divergent opinion about Justice Abhay Oak that is one, only one and one opinion that he is a great person. That is there. But while speaking on this occasion of a felicitation of Dipankar Datta Sahib, to be very frank, I may say that you may have different opinion about his administrative skill, about his judgments. But one constant and universal, only universal opinion of the entire bar and the bench, which we have gathered from the all conversation as a representative of the state is that he is the best human person. 
and that is reflected in his entire working as a judge also and as a administrative person and when while working in the during a covid period as a guardian of the family also friends lastly now we have started the functions by uh, the, by the preamble by offering a flower to the preamble and if you see the preamble four five six important words are there if you see that there, there is a justice there is a freedom there is a liberty and also there is another word paternity the father of the constitution dr ambedkar when he was interviewed by bbc one question was asked if any constitu if this constitution is to be effectively run can you give you one word which you say you which you consider as the most important word of the entire preamble and the spirit of the constitution and which is close to your own heart you can go to that interview which is there on the youtube at, of bbc ambedkar just have a pause there on this question and he said that yes there is one word and that word is paternity bandhuta bandhutva i personally feel that without taking much word for honorable justice dipank datta sir the most suitable word of the constitution which has made an impact on the minds and the hearts of the advocates and the judges of the state of maharashtra and because of which we consider him though he may not be a son of the soil because of his own karma his own work he has established that maharashtra is my karma bhumi and that word for dipankar datta i will say that it is a fraternity he established bandhutva he established this bond of bandhutva and therefore sir our bless our all good wishes with you not only because you are elevated as a supreme court judge justice chabla is the symbol of this high court who only remain in a bombay high court he was not a supreme court judge till a great space of hearts of the advocates and judges of the state of maharashtra is full of respect and love and affection for justice chabla the same feelings we have for you sir and that's why this felicitation function is organized lord shiva i'm thankful for you for accepting our invitation we are more thankful for madam for taking another pain from coming right from delhi to mumbai do not this time traveling by car but by coming even for the by plane but we are thankful that you will also have a same feeling for the state of maharashtra and the advocate community for maharashtra and when i i told my leader manan kumar sir that sir we want to make a felicitation of dipankar datta he said that yes for a justice dipankar datta entire country will be behind you and i will bring all the members it's very very difficult to bring all this different representatives of all the country all the states here but he made an appeal and all my colleagues from all various parts of country came here just to give a symbol that we will respect knowledge we will respect integrity we will respect contribution we will respect hard work but above all in this system we will respect the person having a complete heart of a human being sir the, therefore this felicitation is there i am thankful and i again welcome all of you for this felicitation function thank you very much thank you uh, jayam sir for the introductory speech uh, as a token of respect bar council of maharashtra and goa has prepared a sanman patra for honorable justice shri dipankar datta i request uh, advocate vb kind konde deshmukh sir member of bar council of maharashtra and goa to read the sanman patra for the august gathering sanman patra we the chairman vice chairman and the members of the bar council of maharashtra and goa take this privilege to confer sanman patra upon 
ऑनरेबल श्री जस्टिस दीपंकर दत्ता जज सुप्रीम कोर्ट ऑफ इंडिया ऑन दिस ट्वेंटी फोर डे ऑफ जून टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी थ्री एट यशवंतराव चौहान ऑडिटोरियम मुंबई ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ द एंटायर लीगल फैटर्निटी ऑफ द स्टेट ऑफ महाराष्ट्र एंड गोवा यूर लॉर्डशिप एलिवेशन एज अ जज ऑफ द अपेक्स कोर्ट ऑफ इंडिया हैज ब्रॉड यू द हाइएस्ट प्राइड एंड प्रेस्टीज इन यूअर करियर इट हैज ऑल्सो ब्रॉड ग्लोरी टू अवर बार काउंसिल एज यूअर लॉर्डशिप और चीफ जस्टिस ऑफ बॉम्बे हाईकोर्ट for two and half years you are commitment to do justice covering all practical aspects for meaningful purpose along with speed is recognized as unparalleled in judiciary your knowledge hard work and commitment in the judicial process system as an advocate and as a judge who has delivered landmark judgments evaluating principles of equity non discrimination and other constitutional principles for upliftment of common man is recognized by all the dream of bharat ratna dr baba saheb ambedkar while making the document of constitution as a live platform of justice and the instrument for removing the differences in class creed wealth and all other inequalities is made fruitful by your arguments and judgments we are sure that your judicious approach dedication and modest conduct as a judge will not only make you a successful judge of supreme court but will take your career to the highest in the judicial system we all will permanently preserve a deep sense of gratitude and affection towards your favor the legal fraternity of the state of maharashtra and goa will always be indebted to you for your prolonged association and valuable guidance in various activities of bar council of maharashtra and goa your lordship we feel proud and privileged by presenting you this samman patra thank you sir it's time for felicitation of honorable justice shri dipankar datta at the auspicious hand of honorable justice shri abhay oak sir i request the honorable justice abhay oak sir chief guest to felicitate honorable shri dipankar datta judge supreme court of india with a shawl and crystal request honorable justice abhay ek sir to felicitate uh, madam datta with a shawl and a shrifal
Now I request uh, Advocate Sanjeev Kadam, representing the Advocate Association of Western India, to felicitate Honorable Justice Sri Dipankar Datta with a flower. We have amongst us representative of Bombay Bar Association, Senior Advocate Nitin Tucker and Advocate Vishal Kanade. I request them to please felicitate Honorable Dipanga Datta sir with a bouquet of flowers. Love and respect for Justice Dipanga Datta is to such an extent that member association representing Nagpur Bar Association are present to felicitate Justice Datta. I request office bearers of Nagpur High Court Bar Association, Advocate Atul Pandey and Amol Jaltare to felicitate Justice Datta with a bouquet of flowers. Thank you, Honorable Dignitaries. I request uh, everyone to please give a standing ovation to Honorable Justice Sri Dipankar Datta. We have amongst us Sri Manan Kumar Mishra, Chairman Bar Council of India, Leader of the Bar Association all over India and I request him to deliver the address to the gathering. Honorable Mr. Justice, Abhay Soka, the son of the soil, senior judge, Supreme Court of India, the chief guest of today's function, Honorable Mr. Justice Dipankar Dattaji, the Honorable Judge of Supreme Court, for whose felicitation we have gathered here today. Honorable Mr. Justice Nitin Jamdar, the Acting Chief Justice of Bombay High Court. Sri Anil Singh, the Additional Solicitor General. Dr. Birinda Saraf, Advocate General, State of Maharashtra. Message Justice Datta, the Vice Chairman of Bar Council of India, Mr. S. Prabhakaran, Executive Chairman, 
Mr. Purva Sharma, my friends, my colleagues in the Bar Council of India, the Chairman, Vice Chairman, other office bearers and members of Bar Council of Maharashtra and Goa, Honorable Judges of Bombay High Court, the members of the Bar, the law students, the media people, ladies and gentlemen. In fact, my colleague, Mr. Jain Jai Bhave, who represents the state of Maharashtra and Goa in Bar Council of India, he had to explain in about 5 to 10 minutes why this felicitation function. Friends, there is a solid reason for that. Felicitation le lena ya kisi ko felicitate kar dena it's not a matter of joke. Sabko nahi milta hai. Unless you deserve you won't get. And that too by the lawyers the members of the state bar councils, the representatives of the lawyers, it's, it's so difficult. My friend, Mr. Jain Jai Bhave, he has said many things about Honorable Mr. Justice Datta. And he has proved, he has established that Honorable Mr. Justice Datta deserves this felicitation from the state of Maharashtra from the members of the legal fraternity of this state. We know many, many chief justices, the, the members of the bar are well aware of it. Many chief justices, they come, they, they, they join, they retire, even after elevation, there is no concern with the bar. They cannot, they could not, during their tenure, they could not connect with the arm janta, the common man, or with the bar. Nobody takes care. Honorable Mr. Justice Datta, really, while he was in practice, I know, in Kalakta High Court. He was an asset for the bar. He has also served the Calcutta University as a guest lecturer for about five, six years. My friend, Mr. Jayab, how I told about the International University set up by Bar Council of India Trust at Goa. Honorable Mr. Justice Datta is attached with that university also. A few words about Mr. Justice Datta since it is his felicitation function. Honorable Mr. Justice Datta he joined Supreme Court in December 2022, you know. He hails from a very renowned family. His father, late Justice Sanil Kumar Datta, was a distinguished judge of High Court of Kalanta. And Mr. Justice Deepankar Datta proudly carries forward the legacy. Now, 2006, he was elevated, became a permanent judge of Kalakta High Court. 
and april 2020 he joined as the chief justice of bombay high court and he proved to be very fruitful an asset for this court during that difficult days of pandemic already explained by mr jay bhave those were the days of test for any chief justice the two honorable judges of supreme court sitting here on the dais both i think got distinction in that test how difficult the days were nobody even dare to come out of his residence and even those difficult days they took serious note of the difficulties faced by the people of their respective states by their judicial orders they managed the affairs very successfully so really they deserve a big hand for this their work honorable mr justice dipankar datta in sushant singh's case ye maharashtra bombay ke log hain aapko malum hoga sushant singh he was originally from bihar but in that case a very important verdict came from him the media should refrain from interfering with the fair investigation and influencing the presumption of innocence or guilt for any judge i am telling today giving such verdict such decision it is a very difficult thing media trial and the effort to influence the judgments the decisions of the courts by the media today is a social problem is a problem for the society today only a very bold judge a judge of independent mind can only ignore such media trials and the verdict given by the media on the tv and social media his verdict about the it rules about the jilani building collapse case actually 5 minutes 5 minute ka time humko diya hai ye thoda sa as a chairman bar council ka function hai to thoda sa sir the chief guest of today's function honorable mr justice a sok you know a very successful lawyer he was while in practice here everybody knows unka career yahan kya batana hai he is the son of this while even in judgment you will find he is equally balanced in criminal civil service constitutional matters jahan bitha do chamakte rehte while he was the chief justice of karnataka high court covid days mein to jitna in dono ne kiya even for disabled he passed very very 
effective orders you might be knowing he has not only the concern for the human beings but even for animals ek monkey killing ke case mein he passed an order can future such brutality should not be tolerated friends anganbadi sevikaj are also entitled to gratuity recently in a constitutional bench judgment with regard to the all india bar exam aib honorable honorable mr justice oak has passed an order for the betterment of the legal profession and legal education of the country it's a very revolutionary judgment he has his lordship has passed honorable mr justice as oak is a beacon of fairness and guardian of rights he is the chairman of the academic council of india international university of legal education and research goa and in the very first meeting he took a decision to constitute a directorate he had in his mind that through this institution we can train the lawyers ek baat bataye in one of the function about a year ago i had said there was a time when supreme court had six seven or eight judges you we were thinking why why only maharashtra always dominates in supreme court six seven judges but after seeing their judgments after seeing their concern about the general public the common man after seeing their concern with the legal education and the legal profession ab lagta hai ki why only 6 7 why not all maharashtra bar council is an ideal for all the state bar councils i always say even in my bar council i say it thoda unko lagta hai bura lekin main kehta hu ki jo sach hai soch hai the training programs and that to encourage by the honorable judges one ideal is sitting here as the chief guest today the interest which they take really it is rarest of the rare जज हैं काम है हियरिंग करना कोर्ट में बैठ के आई एल हियर द केस आई एल डिसाइड इट मई वार की जो बार घर में अपना आराम करेंगे बट नो द कंसर्न विद मिस्टर जस्टिस ओक he has for the legal education the law students the young lawyers really it is rare to aaj ke felicitation function mein honorable mr justice datta sahab ke liye ek bhashan unka humne suna tha justice yul elit sahab ke felicitation function mein ज्यादा टाइम लेने में थोड़ा डर लगता है इज अ वेरी वेरी गुड ऑरेटर नॉट ओनली अ वेरी गुड जज वेरी गुड ऑरेटर अभी आप सुनेंगे तो आप एकदम दंग रह जाएंगे इट्स अ वेरी रेयर क्वालिटी फॉर ए जज जज लोगों को बोलने में थोड़ी दिक्कत होती है 
जजमेंट दे देंगे तो बोलना काम वो समझते हैं कि वकील का है बट ही इज माहिर ही इज एक्सपर्ट इन बोथ चलिए आप बहुत बहुत शुभकामना और आपके लंबे आयु की बहुत अच्छे करियर की एक शुभकामना बधाई देते हुए अपनी वाणी को विराम देता हूं धन्यवाद थैंक यू ऑनरेबल चेयरमैन सर नाउ आई रिक्वेस्ट ऑनरेबल डॉक्टर बेंद्र सर ऑफ एडवोकेट जनरल ऑफ महाराष्ट्र टू प्लीज एड्रेस द गैदरिंग ऑनरेबल जस्टिस अभय ओक ऑनरेबल जस्टिस दीपांकर दत्ता ऑनरेबल एक्टिंग चीफ जस्टिस ऑफ बॉम्बे हाई कोर्ट मिस्टर नितिन जामदार लर्नेड जजेस ऑफ द बॉम्बे हाई कोर्ट डिग्नेटरीज एंड द मेंबर्स ऑफ बार काउंसिल ऑफ इंडिया एंड महाराष्ट्र ऑन एंड ऑफ द डायस लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन प्लीज एक्सक्यूज मी फॉर नॉट टेकिंग द नेम्स ऑफ एवरी वन इट विल बी अ रादर लॉन्ग प्रोसेस हमारे चेयरमैन साहब विवेकानंद घाटगे साहब ने आज एक संदेह व्यक्त किया उन्होंने कहा हमारे ए जी साहब नए हैं उनसे जमेगी कि नहीं देखते हैं मैं उनसे इतना ही कहूंगा आप अपना दिल और अपनी बाहें खोल के तो देखिए आप गले लगाने हम फिर दौड़े चले आए ये भी कहूंगा आपसे आपने कहा मैं नया हूं मुझे तो बार काउंसिल का एक सौ फिशियो चेयरमैन हुए छह महीने हो गए आप सिर्फ दस दिन पहले चेयरमैन बने हैं आप खुद ही फैसला कीजिए अपने में नया कौन है प्लीज भी रेस्ट एश्योर कोई भी संदेह हो तो मिलिन पाटिल साहब बैठे जो आपके पहले चेयरमैन थे उनसे पूछ लीजिए एंड प्लीज भी रेस्ट एश्योर वी शेल वर्क हैंड इन हैंड टूगेदर फॉर दी वेलफेयर ऑफ ऑल लॉयर्स इट इज माई एब्सोलूट प्रिवलेज एंड ऑनर टू ज्वाइन ऑल ऑफ यू in felicitating justice dipankar datta in our midst today and the bombay high court has always had very loved and respected chief justices from the kolkata high court we had amongst others justice chitatosh mukherjee justice manoj kumar mukherjee and justice datta was another addition from the kolkata high court which we were privileged honored and fortunate to have as the speakers earlier told he drove all the way from kolkata and headed the judiciary in maharashtra in the most trying times at a time when the whole nation and judiciary was facing a very big crisis and those were times which were required the handling of a situation with a great deal of tact and courage and justice datta lacked neither he tackled and balance the demands and needs of the bar the staff and the litigants throughout the state and in doing so he involved and took into account the views of all stakeholders the former advocate general mr kumbakoni mr singh were always there and actively participating he involved the bar members he involved the officers of the corporation he involved the doctors and he took everybody's views but finally he took a decision which he thought was the most appropriate in fact for every district court he had the statistics with him he called for the statistics the details of each district the number of covid cases in each district and then he took a different decision to meet the requirement of each district and i was a part of those meetings as an office bearer of one of the bar associations and i must share with you all some instances that when he became the chief justice and he took certain decisions he received a long representation from a set of lawyers he did what he thought was appropriate a few months later he did precisely what those lawyers had asked for but another representation came from the same lawyers opposing what he was doing now and i recollect distinctly his words in that meeting he said i'm not looking after the interests of only a small section of lawyers i'm the guardian of 
the entire state and I have to take into account the needs of the lawyer population as large and the litigants as a body. And he said lawyers are dying without work and I need to take into account and therefore he was one of the first courts. Bombay High Court was in fact the first court which opened physically. He led from the front, he sat in the court himself in the central court to hear matters physically and he said lawyers who want to come physically are welcome to come. I think Justice Kulkarni was there with Justice Datta and they both sat in the central court and invited lawyers that whoever wants to come physically comes and I distinctly recollect that at that time there were several people in prominent positions who questioned his decisions but he stood firm and the result was that the Bombay High Court functioned physically and soon it became fully functional and these are decisions which required courage and in fact in those meetings I really admired the tact and the smile with which he always handled our over enthusiastic uh, vice chairman Mr. Uday Varunjikar and his views. <laughs> so he was always very tactful in handling him. Mr. Varunjikar always looks at the interests of lawyers and he had his views but he always balanced it out and he took the views of everyone into account. And as a judge, he touched every aspects of the lives of citizens in Maharashtra. He rendered decisions on such important cases. He monitored even on the judicial side, the uh, facilities provided during COVID. He took suo moto cognizance of building collapses in Mumbai. He even took cognizance of a PIL about the non-filling of potholes in Mumbai and as a result of which there were accidents. And therefore he touched even the minutest uh, detail of a citizen in Maharashtra. He ensured transparency in administration. But at the same time, he was very firm and strict about frivolous PILs. And he used to impose heavy costs on those PILs. For those who do not know, Justice Datta is also a seasoned and trained cricket player. And after his arrival in Mumbai, the lawyers have not won a single cricket match against the judges. But even in the courtrooms, he was often seen hitting meritless arguments for a big six. And at the same time, learned and meritorious arguments were dealt with, with the deference they required. And if you made absolutely frivolous arguments, then sometimes I felt it was Kevin Pollard batting in the slog overs. And that is what that those arguments got. Coming from the land of uh, Rabindranath Tagore, Justice Datta has often quoted literature and spe famous speeches in his judgments. And during one of his judgments relating to COVID, he quoted the Tryst with Destiny, the famous speech of Jawaharlal Nehru on the day India achieved independence. Now in times when issues of seminal importance which touch the lives of every aspect of a citizen's life are before the Supreme Court, Justice Datta will be one of the authors of the future destiny of our country. And we have no doubt that he will do so, as always, in a manner which will best subserve the interests of everyone. Sir, the Bar Council of Maharashtra and Goa in recent times have strived very hard and it has always worked for the welfare of lawyers and in particular it has been focusing on grooming young lawyers in recent times. And in this effort, we have always received great support from some of our learned judges, Justice Gawai, Justice Oak has always been in our midst to guide us, to mentor us, and we are grateful to him for being here today. And sir, we'll equally look forward to your support and guidance so that the Bar Council can continue working for the collective welfare of the lawyer community. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, it is an honor and privilege to welcome our mentor and guide for Bar Council of Maharashtra and Goa, Honorable Addition Solicitor General of India, Shri Anil Singh, sir, to please address the gathering. Justice Abhay Oak, the Chief Guest of this function, Justice Dipankar Datto, I think I am uh, pronouncing it properly. Dat 
दत्तु जैसे दीपंकर दत्तु नॉट बिकॉज हिज एक्सपीरियंस इन नागपुर बिकॉज एवरीबडी वॉज स्पीक वे सेइंग दत्ता जैसे दीपंकर दत्ता बट देन आई थिंक जस्टिस दत्ता करेक्टेड एंड ही सेड्स दत्तु दत्तु दीपंकर दत्तु जस्टिस नितिन जमदार द एक्टिंग एक्टिंग चीफ जस्टिस ऑफ द बॉम्बे हाई कोर्ट मिसिस दीपंकर दत्तु ऑल जजेस ऑफ द बॉम्बे हाई कोर्ट फॉर्मर जजेस मेंबर्स ऑफ द बार काउंसिल ऑफ महाराष्ट्र एंड गोवा मेंबर ऑफ द बार काउंसिल ऑफ इंडिया लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन टूडेज फंक्शन इज ऑफ अ ग्रेट सिग्निफिक सिग्निफिकेंस एंड इंपॉर्टेंस फॉर थ्री डिफरेंट रीजन वन इज दैट इट्स अ फेलिसिटेशन ऑफ जस्टिस दीपंकर दत्ता हु इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट पॉपुलर एंड लव्ड चीफ जस्टिस वी एवर हैड and who has won the heart of the bar the registry the staff the junior lawyers and the litigant public and the second reason is that he is being felicitated at the hands of justice abhay ok who has been equally popular as a judge of the bombay high court as a chief justice of the karnataka high court and now as a judge of the supreme court and thirdly because today is justice kulkarni's birthday with whom justice dipanka datta had a long sitting and therefore this is a special occasion for all of us i congratulate justice dipanka datta for being elevated to the supreme court of india in fact the honorable former chief justice doesn't require any introduction since he is known for his good deeds as a person and his sound judgment as a judge prevail and speak louder than what i would say about him today he is a perfect example as to how they should how should be the relation of the bar and the bench he had always been an inspiration to the junior lawyers of the bar justice tattu has always maintained a perfect equilibrium while maintaining relation on the one hand and administering justice on the other hand in spite of attaining such a high position in judiciary he treats judges of the high court the members of the lower judiciary the junior lawyers the staff with dignity it was always present experience to argue matters before the former chief justice he has a reputation of giving a patient hearing quick understanding and finding satisfactory solution by passing appropriate orders his lordship has dealt with almost all branches of law may be civil service law criminal law or even taxation from his judgments we can make out that he interpreted law and molded a relief keeping in mind the larger interest of the public and taking judicial notice of various factors prevailing in the society to see that the common man gets justice my first interaction with the former chief justice was when he took oath at raj bhavan as mentioned by mr jay bhave and mr biren saraf also that he drove from kolkata to mumbai during pandemic time and this shows his commitment to the institution and especially the bombay high court his lordship then immediately got up the speed with the scenario scenario in the in, in the state of maharashtra his lordship has handled several public interest litigation remarkably during the pandemic to ensure that the people of maharashtra do not suffer and they get best treatment in the in the in the state in fact it was his lordship's initiative and the judgment that home to home vaccination drive was ordered for people who could not attend vaccination center during covid time and thereafter this was followed by other states also i remember during the period of pandemic while when public interest litigation was filed seeking to declare members of the legal fraternity including the judges as frontline worker and to vaccinate them vaccinate them for corona virus on a priority basis his lordship in the open court asked the petitioner whether he had watched film titanic 
and then he remarked that as a captain of the ship first comes the society then the judiciary and that he himself came last due to his word his lordship held out and took the vaccination only after the every other person in the high court had been vaccinated and they say real character is shown in tough situation this shows the majesty of his lordship's character his lordship was always fast on the uptake and would easily spot an unresearched and fallacious argument within minutes he would then from his recollection cite the relevant authority on the proposition as a judge of the supreme court of india his lordship has passed judgments of great significance such as in the case of godress sarali where his lordship explained the difference between the maintainability and entertainability of the repetition at the judgment of samit sumit venture where he expounded on territorial jurisdiction these may sound like simple concept but sometimes the toughest task is to explain the simple thing as i mentioned before he was elevated to the to the apex court during his tenure and around 2 years as the chief justice of bombay high court he has given a various landmark judgments as mentioned by shri nimanan mishra in case of sushant singh rajput justice dipankar datta sitting with justice kulkarni while considering the constant media reporting and trial by media that was taking place in relation to the actor sushant singh rajput after considering detailed arguments observed that media trial during the pendency of investigation interferes with the administration of justice and would amount to contempt of court contempt of court under the contempt of court act 1971 the matter was heard via video conferencing and various lawyers throughout the country from different part of the countries they participated in the matter and they argued virtually in case of ratan soli luth was a state of maharashtra his lordship dealt with issue of power of the governor in relation to making nomination on the legislative council the contention that governor was bound to oblige the recommendation to the council of ministers was rejected and it was held that governor had the power to either accept or return the recommendation and made as made by the council of ministers forming part of the advice has to be discharged within a reasonable time in this judgment his lordship also observed that a court in the course of hearing of public interest litigation ought to remind itself that the courts that it is the court's obligation to act as the custodian of constitutional morale and ethics even in service law his lordship dealt with various matters in adani electricity matter his lordship sitting with justice karnik held that when a notification on its own term is amenable to two meanings the court would have to elect that meaning out of out of the two which advances the cause of members of the union and not the cause of the petitioner company the list is never ending such is the judicial ability and skill of his lordship let it not be said that is let it not be said that his lordship is only about the law as the learned advocate general mentioned that he is a very good cricketer and in fact he was always the opening batsman whenever the cricket match was held uh, between the lawyers and the judges i was asked to bowl while he was batting and i must say that his batting skills are certainly not pleasant for a part time bowlers like me many of me when we of uh, you may not be knowing this is dipankar datta is also a very good singer he likes to sing songs of kishore kumar i have heard him singing in some function not a function but a small gathering in the in goa when uh, we had met for some function uh, we have normally function of singing we have orchestra of the palette side when there is annual day sometimes we'll invite just dipan gardatta also to sing there and then we'll have uh, benefit of his, his songs of kishor kumar it is said that behind every successful 
man, there is a woman. Justice Dipankar Dutta's wife, Juma, is Mrs. Juma is his source of strength. Mrs. Juma is of a amicable nature, simple, friendly, and soft spoken. Mrs. Juma is an outstanding photographer and loves to travel. My wife and I had an opportunity of interacting with her on several occasions and have always enjoyed her company. I consider my privilege to appear in many important matters before Justice Dipankar Dattu as a Chief Justice of Bombay High Court. And it had been a wonderful experience appearing before him. And I think all of us will share the same view which I have. I wish Dipankar, Justice Dipankar Dutta a great success in his future career. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. It is my honor and privilege to request Honorable Shri Justice Nitin Zamdar, Acting Chief Justice of the Bombay High Court, to address the gathering. Honorable Justice Abayo, Judge Supreme Court of India, Honorable Justice Dipan Kadatta, Judge Supreme Court of India, all the dignitaries on the dais and of the dais. First, I want to express my gratitude to the Bar Council of Maharashtra and Goa for organizing this event to honor Justice Dipankar Dutta. That is because due to the short notice of his appointment as a Supreme Judge of Supreme Court of India, we couldn't really bid him proper farewell at that time. However, this event today, organized by the Bar Council of Maharashtra, I take this opportunity on behalf of the entire judiciary in Maharashtra to show our appreciation and respect for his remarkable contribution. Speakers before me have spoken about various qualities of Justice Datta. I would emphasize them, but with an insider view. As a colleague of Justice Datta, Every word that earlier speaker has spoken is absolutely true. The, in April 2020, when COVID-19 began, Justice Datta assumed the, the role of our leader. He faced all the unprecedented challenge that it presented. The speakers have mentioned about Justice Datta traveling from Calcutta to Mumbai. It is not just a drive. At that time, there was not even a restroom available throughout the journey. We were surprised at how we could drive from all the way. We, when, the, when the new chief justice comes, we were always, everyone, every judge is apprehensive with how he would turn out to be. But when we heard that he is driving all the way from Calcutta to Mumbai, it gave us an assurance that somebody who cares and somebody who has a passion for justice is coming. Despite all his obstacles that the COVID-19 pandemic that we faced, we had to rely on phone calls, we had to rely on video meetings. I know as how challenging that times were. Justice Datta swiftly and effectively made decisions to minimize all the negative impact of the pandemic. He issued orders for medical assistance to the affected citizens. He ordered at-home vaccinations to the elderly. He also addressed the issue of prisoners who were facing COVID-19. He prioritized all frontline workers over legal community for vaccination. It is mentioned that he chose to vaccinate the last, which was not liked by just Mrs. Datta, who was <laughs> who insisted that he must take care of himself. <laughs> but in those difficult times, Justice Datta led the judiciary from the front and it was virtually like a captain leading a ship through a storm. He worked tirelessly to ensure smooth functioning of the entire judicial system. He exemplifies qualities such as discipline, ethics, friendship, fairness in every aspect of his work. 
He actively involved all stakeholders, including the Bar Council, to ensure legal system functioned effectively for everyone involved. He took various initiatives on the administrative side, in, despite shortage of judges due to retirement and vacancies. He made it a point to regularly visit different benches to resolve local issues affecting the judiciary and spearheaded important projects. One of the good things that happened during his tenure, which he actively pursued, was land for the new High Court, also for the university. Bombay High Court is always a very difficult court because of geographical, geographical diversity, the difficulty, this, the diversity in the litigation. We have, as I've said in a function in Aurangabad recently, we have forests of Goa, we have beach, we have mountains, we have uh, tribals, we have the rich, some of the richest persons in the country. It all type of litigation comes in Bombay High Court. It, and in that type of diverse litigation, Justice Dutta excelled. And I'm sure he will carry that commitment and that experience in Supreme Court and excel in Supreme Court as well. The, normally, we all judges work very we alone. That can be quite lonely. Justice Datta made it sure that there is a bonding between judges so that they work together as a team for larger cause of imparting justice. The, it was just uh, Dr. Saraf mentioned about losing every cricket match. There is a secret behind it because he never took this match lightly. Under his captainship, every judge was impressed upon that we have to play to win. This is not a festive match at all. <laughs> not many of you are aware of that his Lordship has a varied interest. The Mr. Singh mentioned about his singing and he stopped at that. But Justice Datta, if he was not a judge, he would have still excelled as a singer. We have many evenings, we have heard him with rapt attention, especially his Bengali songs. Uh, they, uh, Mr. Singh mentioned that appellate side should invite him. I urge you to invite him just to hear him sing. He has a, <laughs> he has a passion for traveling and driving. Just this summer vacation, Justice Datta and Madam Datta drove from Srinagar to one of the remotest points in Ladakh, driving all by himself. He's also an avid photographer, but not as good as just uh, Mrs. Datta. <laughs> Justice Datta's tenure as a Chief Justice of Bombay High Court was a remarkable one, one that humanized our judiciary, brought judges closer, and more importantly, gave a sense of security to our district judiciary, which I must convey to all the members, especially those who are practicing the district courts, that our district judiciary is one of the most stressed working class today. The Justice Zatta made it sure that they have a sense of security and gave them some protection. Having taken over the mental, in just three weeks, I have realized what big boots he has left for me to fill. His positive impact will guide Bombay High Court for a very long time. On behalf of everyone present here, I extend my congratulations to Justice Datta, Madam Datta. I wish them happiness, satisfaction and success. Thank you. Sir, to please address the gathering. Please welcome with a big round of applause. Dignitaries on the dais and of the dais. Time allocated to me is of 15 minutes, so I am not taking all the names. I am taking that liberty. Other day I attended a function 
of bar council in sindhudurg district when one of the members of the bar council said that justice oak has become ex officio member of the maharashtra bar council rather maharashtra bar council of maharashtra and goa i have so much to say about brother justice dipankar datto but as a constitutional functionary i'll be failing in my duty if i don't respond to what is said by the chairman of the bar council of maharashtra and goa today in his opening address vivekananda ji ghatge who has recently taken over as the chairman of the bar council of maharashtra and goa said something about me i must say that it was not about me but about institution the great institution of bombay high court i want to say one thing before this august uh, audience when a member of the bar becomes chairman of state bar council and that also a bar council which is praised by none other than the chairman mr manan kumar mishra he ceases to represent a particular district he ceases to represent a particular region he represents entire bar of the state obviously he was referring to the issue regarding setting up a bench at kolapur i am thankful to bar council because bar council gave me opportunity to express my personal views about this issue in the function in sindhudurga district in presence of about 700 members of the bar today i am not going to deal with that only one thing which i want to tell by way of response is that we the judges we have taken oath under the constitution and it is our duty to uphold the constitution and law and therefore we don't pass orders against somebody because we don't like that litigant we pass orders to uphold the constitution and laws he also referred to famous judgment of uh, hari shuppal after having a judge for almost 20 years and lawyer for 20 years i don't think that a constitutional court is required to pronounce a judgment to say that lawyers shall not boycott the courts it is something which is very implicit in the duty of the advocate about 2 months back one of the law colleges in pune called upon me to address on contribution of chatrapati shahu maharaj to the cause of justice to the judiciary and that required me to read so many books on chatrapati shahu maharaj vivekananda ji ghatge comes from kolhapur which is a place blessed by chatrapati shahu maharaj after i read about chatrapati shahu maharaj i realized that he was perhaps the only king in entire country who gave modern judiciary to his own state he gave modern laws he set up civil courts district court high court and supreme court in the state i want to tell only one thing to mr vivekanand ji ghatge after reading so much about chatrapati shahu maharaj that if his if during his tenure if lawyers would have boycotted the court chatrapati shahu maharaj would not have taken it kindly that's the only thing which i want to say now coming to my esteemed brother jassi dipankar datto i have so much to say on 22nd june he completed 17 long years as a judge of constitutional court today everybody talked about his historic journey from kolkata to bombay to take oath as chief justice of bombay high court it was not only an adventure which only brother dipankar datto as a sportsman could have undertaken but this was out of utmost dedication to the cause of justice utmost dedication to the oath which he has taken under the constitution one more important thing which was perhaps missed by the earlier speakers i had read in newspapers i was in bangalore at that time that government of maharashtra had offered a chartered plane to jassi dipankar datto to bring him to mumbai 
His simplicity is reflected from the fact that he politely refused that offer and undertook this journey where uh, acting chief justice, justice Nitin Damdar said that even washrooms were not available in those days. His entire thought process is reflected from a letter addressed by him as judge of Kolkata High Court on 4th November 2019 to fellow judges. He wrote this letter after he was appointed as head of the administration of the Kolkata High Court. In this letter, he invited attention of the judges to the two-year-old amendment carried out to the Central Motor Vehicles rules. He emphasized the fact that it was no longer permissible even for the judges of the High Court to have fixed red beacon lights on their vehicles. He was at pains to point out that it is also not permissible for any judge to affix board and plates towards the front and rear windshields with inscriptions to show that a judge is travelling in that particular vehicle. This shows the approach of Brother Jassi Dipankar. I believe Times of India gave very wide publicity to this letter. Right from day one of his appointment as uh, judge of the Kolkata High Court, he was always known as a fearless judge. Large number of decisions rendered by him, both in Kolkata High Court and Bombay High Court, bear testimony for this. While sitting in Kolkata High Court, he dealt with a case concerning challenge to the restrictions put by the local government, state government, on immersion of Durga idols. Interestingly, he observed in the judgment that it was dangerous to mix politics with religion. How fearless is this judge is reflected from this judgment. He said that by putting restrictions, the state government has made an attempt to pamper and appease a minority section of the society. And he warned the government that it should not take decisions that will pit one community against the another in secular setup. Almost all speakers have referred to the case of uh, Nilesh Nawalkha dealing with the incident of unnatural death of a leading actor from Bollywood. I am not going to repeat what uh, he said in that judgment, but he said something more which is not told by other speakers. Now he has said in his judgment that as it is dignity of an individual even after his death cannot be left to the mercy of journalist reporters, the same being part of article 21 has to be protected. All of us know the directions we issued while heading PIL bench dealing with uh, COVID cases. I am not going to report, repeat that. He dealt with very important issue of about 40 structures which are in the close vicinity of Mumbai International Airport which violated the height norms. He directed the authorities to take action. A litigation came to him which involved a very senior minister of the state government. Allegations were made against him by a police officer. He directed preliminary inquiry to be conducted against the senior state minister. He dealt with five of a Sumoto PIL issue, which arose in 2020 when a building within limits of municipal corporation of Bhivandi Nizampur collapsed and 41 people lost their lives. He has issued very important directions to all the municipal corporations and municipal councils in Mumbai metropolitan region to take action against all dilapidated and illegal buildings. Earlier speaker, one of the earlier speakers has referred to a PIL where he dealt with the issue of articles 166 and 171 of the Constitution of India dealing with the power of the governor to nominate members of the uh, Legislative Council as per the recommendations of the Council of Ministers. Very important thing which he has said in the judgment, notwithstanding Article 361, is that it is the duty of the Honourable Governor to communicate his reservations about the names suggested by the Council of Ministers within a reasonable time. I can go on and on citing 
landmark decisions rendered by him during the last 17 years. However, due to constraints of time, I am refraining from doing that. I can only say that his tenure as the Chief Justice of Bombay High Court enhanced his reputation, which he always carried as a judge of Calcutta High Court, that he is one of the most fearless judges we have. Brother Deepankar is also known for his exemplary behavior with his staff and members of the registry. He treated each and every member of the staff with dignity and respect. I always believe that a good judge has to deliver good judgments. But hallmark of a good judge is the treatment which he gives to his staff and his uh, members of the registry. Some of the members of the registry who has worked with him during his tenure as the Chief Justice told me that all of them were treated with great deal of dignity. He attended to personal issues of members of the registry. As I said, this shows how great he is, uh, how great human being Brother Jassi Dipankar is. There is one more important task undertaken by Brother Jassi Dipankar. He was a part of the National Court Management System, which is known as popularly known as NCMS. He had taken a great pain for preparing one of the six baseline reports which guided the committees of all the states. I am really happy to note that Honorable the Chief Justice of India has appointed him as the chairman of NCMS and I am sure under his leadership all the activities of NCMS will be fully revived which will deal with all aspects of administration of the courts and in particular the courts in districts. As a judge of Kolkata High Court, he headed many administrative committees. As far as Bombay High Court is concerned, Brother Justice Nitin Zandar has already said about what he did on the administrative side. Still, one of the most important achievements, which I will repeat, is the initiative which he took for ensuring that government of Maharashtra allots a sufficiently large plot for construction of new high court complex. Bombay High Court has a huge issue. Our sanction strength is 94. If I remember correctly, only once during the tenure of uh, Chief Justice Mohit Shah that we crossed figure of 70 and we have reached figure of 74. Today, I believe we have 40 permanent judges and 26 additional judges, including the three who were sworn in the last week. There is a huge filing, not only in the principal seat, but also at Aurangabad. And Bombay High Court is dealing with such large filing with two-thirds of its strength. Brother Justice R.D. Dhanuka, outgoing Chief Justice, rightly said in one of the newspaper interviews that the principal seat in Bombay needs minimum 50 judges to deal with the kind of filing which is made both on the civil and criminal side as well as original side. But the question which we will have to ask ourselves is where those 50 judges will sit. The first difficulty is appointing so many judges. But even if we appoint those judges, where is the place for the judges to sit? I have travelled across to various high courts. I was amazed to see the kind of facilities which are available in the High Court at Ilhabad, the bench at Lucknow. I was really surprised to see kind of facilities which are available in the new court building of Patna High Court. I was told by the other in the Chief Justice that Patna High Court is going to construct a multi-storied parking for the members of the bar. And today we have a situation where there is not a single parking space available for litigants and members of the bar in the compound of the High Court. Forget about the facilities to the litigants. And therefore, I thank Brother Justice Deepankar for taking initiative. And I'm sure that with the recent news which I read in, news, uh, in the newspapers that government has identified a site for construction of uh, new High Court complex, uh, things will be better for Bombay High Court. Justice uh, Dipankar Datto has a long career ahead of him. He has a tenure of more than six and a half years in the Supreme Court. At present, there are three judges who come from Bombay High Court, 
who are part of the Supreme Court. Of course, all of us will, all of you will agree with me that we must treat Brother Jassi Dipankar as a judge of the Bombay High Court for all purposes. Our present CJI has career of about one year, five months, uh, less than two years. Brother Justice Bhushan Gawai has career of two and a half years. But Justice Dipankar is going to be there in Supreme Court for six and a half years. And therefore, there is a huge burden on him to discharge as representing Bombay High Court in the highest court of the country. And uh, considering his long tenure, mantle will fall upon him to become a guardian of Bombay High Court. I am sure that successive Chief Justices will consult Brother Justice Dipankar when it comes to finalization of the drawings of the new High Court complex. Because I had occasion to discuss this issue with him, I found that he has made in-depth study of what is really required by new High Court complex. Everyone knows that Brother Justice Dipankar is a great cricketer. Other day I was talking to my colleague judge. This year, there was the traditional match between bar and bench in Supreme Court was postponed. We don't know when it is going to be held now. But my reason for postponement is different, which I shared with one of my colleagues. It was to be held in the tenure of outgoing president of the Supreme Court Bar Association. And perhaps he felt that Dipankar being part of the team of the uh, Supreme Court, the bar will never succeed. And that's the only reason for postponement. I was fortunate to have Brother Jesse Dipankar sitting with me for two days, two or three days in Supreme Court. During this brief period, I noticed his great legal acumen and more importantly, the great legal acumen balanced with a very sound approach. He has already delivered various landmark judgments in the Supreme Court and I am sure that hundreds will follow during the long span of six and a half years. There is something more which I want to say as uh, somebody who is holding constitutional office. I am sorry to say that it took more than two months for the government to clear the recommendation of Brother Justice Dipan Khadatto as judge of the Supreme Court. During this difficult period of two months, I used to often interact with him on phone. I want to share with the audience here that he was completely unruffled. Naturally, he must be feeling some stress, but he never showed that stress. Some senior members of bar used to appear before him during that period told me that he showed no signs of stress while working in that period of two months. And that shows the real character of Brother Jassi Dipankar Dattu. Long time back, I remember to have read what Justice Potter Stewart, a very eminent judge, eminent ex-judge of the US Supreme Court said. I don't exactly remember his words, but if I recollect correctly, he has said, that the mark of a good judge, he said about a good judge, that when you read his judgments, you cannot tell whether the judgment is written by a man or woman. You cannot tell whether a judgment is written by a liberal or conservative judge. And you cannot tell whether judgment is written by a person belonging to a particular religion. And I firmly believe that Brother Jesse Dipankar Dattu is really a good judge in terms of this description because you read his judgments. The judgments are very balanced and the judgments which he delivers are perfectly within four corners of law. I can go on and on, but I think now it is already 1.15. I wish a great success to Brother Jasid Dipankar Dattu. As uh, Ms. Anil Singh said, 
his success is due to great support which he always got from Mrs. Datto. And fortunately, she's here. And therefore, all of us must compliment her also. I wish a great success to Brother Jasit Dipankar Datto in the long career ahead of him. I thank members of the bar, the chairman and members of the bar council for giving me this opportunity to say two things about Brother Jasit Dipankar Datta. And it was indeed a great privilege for me to preside over his felicitation function. I thank everybody who is present here. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Justice Abhay Oksar. Now, with big round of applause, let us all request Honorable Justice Sri Deepankar Datto, sir, to please address the gathering. The Chief Guest of the Day. Justice Abhay Ok, Judge Supreme Court of India, Justice Nitin Jamdar, Acting Chief Justice, Bombay High Court, dignitaries on the dais and of the dais, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. A very good afternoon to one and all. In a situation like this, it is difficult to keep emotions away. I was wondering, hearing all these speakers, whether I did as much to deserve so much of love, affection and warmth. I sincerely wish I could have continued as the Chief Justice of Bombay High Court. You know, when Mr. Jain Jaibhave approached me about a month back for this felicitation program. I immediately accepted his request. A program such as this serves twin purposes. The first is it gives an opportunity to meet and greet old acquaintances and share with them some of my experiences as Chief Justice of the Bombay High Court. Secondly, and more importantly, you know, it opens up a window for the people with whom I have worked to express their opinion, not only to appreciate, but to tell me about the expectations they had, which I did not live up to. I would say there are two or three instances where I felt that I should have worked at a greater pace to bring about the desired result. The first is with regard to the land at Bandra Kulda complex for the High Court. I don't want to place the blame on anyone, but what I read from the newspapers is this, that government resolutions have been issued and Dr. Saraf, Advocate General for the State of Maharashtra, has assured the court that steps in the right direction would be taken. Here, the other issue that has been flagged by the Chairman of the Bar Council about Kolapur, about a bench at Kolapur. Now, as the Chief Justice, I never said no. But what I said was that the government is so eager for a bench to be set up at Kolapur, let them show the same eagerness for the land at the Bandra Kulla complex. Then only we would be thinking about Kolapur. 
why I did not say that uh, yes, there should be a bench at Kolapur at present. There are various reasons for it, but one of the primary reasons that weighed in my mind was that Aurangabad bench caters to 13 districts. Principal seat at Bombay caters to 13 districts. Nagpur bench caters to 11 districts. Now, if for setting up the Kolapur bench, if it has to cater to six districts, which would be carved out of the jurisdiction of the principal seat, Bombay would be left with only seven. And one doesn't know. In future, Aurangabad may stake a claim that we should be the principal seat and not Bombay. Nagpur could also stake a claim with 11 districts. I said no. It requires deliberations, it requires discussions, and only then we can think of a bench at Kolhapur with six districts. It could be three, it could be four, it could be six, it could be more, but not at this stage. But I do feel that, yes, Maharashtra being Maharashtra, and people having to come to Bombay for instituting cases, traveling 700, 800 kilometers, Bombay being one of the poshest cities of India, where the cost of living is quite high, litigants would be facing difficulties. Definitely, it's a burning problem, which needs to be addressed. And I'm sure the future chief justices would definitely advert to this issue. And with the able cooperation of the government of Maharashtra, find a solution to it. As has been spoken to by one of my predecessor speakers, that I missed out on a farewell by the bar. I had to leave suddenly, my notification came on a Sunday, and I had to take oath on a Monday. And I cannot thank the organizers more for arranging this function. You know, the same thing happened when I left Calcutta for Bombay. I was not bidden a farewell. But this particular program sufficiently measures up to everything that I could have hoped for. My heartfelt gratitude to the chief guest of the day, Justice Oak, to grace this occasion and to present me the memento. I've always seen him as an elder brother, as a guide, as a mentor. And sir, on the bench, I, along with either Justice Kulkarni or Justice Karnik or Justice Madhav Jamdar with whoever I have sat or with Justice Abhay Auja, we took forward your order in the mangrove case. We must all, you know, be all praises for Justice Oak and Justice Chagla for the judgment of September 2017, which really has been a protector of the mangroves in Maharashtra. There have been numerous cases where Mr. Kumokoni appeared as the Advocate General seeking our permission Yes, development is of course necessary, but there has to be a balance struck between sustainable development as well as the environment. As I was saying, I thought that I also failed on uh, one aspect and uh, there in that matter Dr. Varanjukar appeared. That was with regard to the uh, boards with the pictures of the political leaders, which is an eyesore really. I tried my best with my partner judge, whoever was with me, to ensure that the boards are removed. But at one point of time, I also felt helpless when I found that on the compound wall of the Chief Justice's bungalow, a board was hung up. I said, if this is the position, it's better that, uh, you know, the matter takes its own course, somebody else deals with the matter. It's not for the Chief Justice to do it, otherwise people would be saying he is becoming a judge in his own cause.
this function especially gives me the opportunity to let all of you know that my tenure of 31 months here as the head of the judiciary of Maharashtra and Goa has been one of the best phases of my life. And the association with you all would be fully cherished by me for the rest of my life. I feel very proud learning of your satisfaction and contentment with the way I helm the affairs of the judiciary here. The journey from the oldest chartered high court to the second oldest was not without worries, but that is now part of history. But what that journey did was to make me mentally fully prepared for the tougher challenges to come in my way in the days to come. I meant business immediately after taking over, but the pandemic posed the greatest challenge. I know how difficult it was to get all the stakeholders together and to arrive at decisions without any divergence of opinion. I must especially thank all the members of the bar who were present in the frequently called review meetings, and some of them are present in the auditorium today, who extended their helping hands to the administrative committee judges to keep the system inch forward slowly but steadily without, however, taking a backward step till at least the second wave hit us and which forced all of us to take cover once again. But let me tell you, it was not an individual effort of the Chief Justice. We all forged a perfect team of judges, advocates, registrars, staff members, as well as bureaucrats, who not only worked together, but respected, trusted, and cared for each other. With the grace and blessings of all the members of the bar, we were able to steer the ship in the right direction, as Justice Jamdar spoke about. I've in the past expressed, and I again express my sincere gratitude to all my former colleagues for extending their wholehearted support and cooperation in those literally terrifying conditions. Not once did any judge say no to me when I requested him or her to be on a particular job. Each judge rose to the occasion to ensure that the institution sailed in the right direction. I did only as much expected of me as the captain of the ship. My parents had inculcated in me, in fair measure, the values of honesty, bravery, and empathy. Riding on the same, I have moved on in my life the way I wanted to live it. Indeed, on the way, life has taught me many a valuable lesson. One of the primary lessons is that, although I have been a constitutional functionary for more than 17 years, Yet, I must not forget that I'm after all a human being and a public servant. That I stand before you today as a judge of the Supreme Court of India is a mere incident of service, which once again amply proves the existence of the Almighty. I consider myself to be fortunate to be a son of India, who has been entrusted by the people to look after their well-being. My focus has all along been to serve the people according to the oath of office I have taken, and to secure to them the promises that are contained in the preamble of India, of the Constitution of India. It is not that in the process I have not committed any errors. In fact, I believe in the age-old saying, to us is human. But being a constitutional functionary, it is my duty to ensure that the margin of error is reduced. Errors mean 
multiplicity of litigation going up to the Supreme Court. And although no judge knowingly commits any error, but a lack of industry, a lack of effort, a lack of labor towards preparing the judgments do contribute to errors being committed, which is not at all desirable. But in every judgment that I author, the effort is built up by a lot of research. And let me tell you, although we have been told by our senior judges that your duty comes to an end as soon as you sign the judgment, it does give a touch of personal satisfaction when you know that your judgment has been upheld by the Supreme Court. And above all, such affirmation brings cheer to the litigant who had approached the court for validation of his actions, for he always felt that he is right. And that is all the more satisfying. But at the same time, I must remind my colleagues who are present here that being a public servant does not mean that you implement orders of others caring only for the consequences that it would bear on your future and not the institutional cause. I take pride in belonging to that breed of terribly independent Calcutta High Court judges who have never compromised for their own cause, knowing that what has been instructed to them is unjust. It is not my individual success that I have reached this position. My life story could well have been very different had it not been for the unstinting support and the choices blessings I received all through my life from my late revered parents, my family members, including my better half Juma, my friends, my peers, my former Chief Justice, Justice Matre of the Calcutta High Court, my well-wishers, members of the registry, support staff, etc. I regret not being able to name all of them, for the list is perhaps unending. However, for the benefit of everyone present in the audience, too, I cannot but acknowledge the contribution of my spine for what I am today. Keeping your spine erect is an imperative for judges and lawyers alike. It has helped me stand tall despite the adversities faced in life. And I do believe that notwithstanding tougher conditions that my spine may encounter in future, it will never bend. Before Before I conclude, it is necessary to dwell upon three things. First, I must congratulate the Bar Council of Maharashtra and Goa for the exemplary work that it has been performing through its basic legal education program, the continuous legal education program, and judicial service as a career. Conducting such programs is the need of the hour if the intention is to get the best talent join the bar and the bench. The recent idea of publishing books on the practice of civil and criminal laws is truly novel. And I have no doubt in my mind that the same will be beneficial, not only for the bar, but also for the bench. In my view, BCMG is a council which is non-pareil. It has no match in the country. and. I urge the BCMG to keep up its good work. The second thing I wish to touch upon is the disinclination of advocates of some standing not respecting the call of the Chief Justice to switch sides. Some may have genuine difficulties, personal or otherwise, dissuading them from considering acceptance of the offer. But those who decline on economic considerations must be impressed upon to consider the duty they owe to the people of the nation and revisit their decision not to switch. 
Bombay High Court is one of the prestigious, if not the most prestigious high courts of the country. I've been approached by lawyers of great repute complaining that we do not have sufficient number of judges. Please do something. But you people have to understand that as the Chief Justice, my hands were also tied. Unless I get a good pool of advocates who can be recommended for elevation, where do we get the judges? And it does no good appointing judges, say at the age of 53, 54. They would be there only for seven, eight years. I've always stressed upon catching advocates young, but for that I need I needed the concurrence of the advocate to join the bench. That was sadly lacking in many a case. I would uh, request all the seniors here, Mr. Kambata, Mr. Don, Mr. Kumogoni, Mr. Thakkar, Mr. Damle, please try to impress upon the juniors. Otherwise, you know, as Justice Oak has said, after 2025 November, till at least 2029, last period of 2029, there would not be a single Bombay High Court judge in the Collegium of the Supreme Court. Definitely Bombay High Court is now my own High Court and I would be looking after the interest. But now if we appoint judges in the Bombay High Court at the age of 48, 49, 50 onwards, we don't get sufficient number of judges in the Collegium. That is one aspect which needs to be addressed. And the third uh, and the final thing is about cricket. I owe a lot to cricket, which has been my first love. You know, at a, one point of time in my career, I had to choose between the two, cricket or law. So I opted for law. But I can tell you that the effect of the game of cricket on the life of a lawyer is immense. Why lawyer? As a judge also. Let us say, starting from the toss, if you are the captain of the team, you have to decide whether to bat or to field. 30 minutes before the toss, you may have decided that I will be going for this or that, but within 30 minutes, the weather can change. So you have to take prompt decisions. As judges, you have to take prompt decisions. Now, as a batsman, when you are preparing for facing a ball to be thrown at you by the bowler, do you think about what the next ball would be? No, because you don't know whether you would survive this ball or not. So take this ball to be bowled at you as a day. If you play the ball well, if you strike it well for a boundary or an over boundary, the satisfaction that you get, the same satisfaction you will get while going to sleep after a good day's work. What is cricket? Cricket is a game of glorious uncertainty. If you have to succeed, you have to overcome that uncertainty. Now, what is the life of a lawyer? Once he starts, it's full of uncertainty. Nobody can say that, yes, this one lawyer would become a very good lawyer in the future. You have to build yourself up. Therefore, while playing cricket, as you plan these strategies, as a lawyer also, you may have to do it. As the captain of a cricketing team, you know who are your best players on the field. While you position them for taking catches or for obstructing boundaries, you know, you will have to think. So as a judge, as the chief justice, you will also have to think who, is, who are your players who can cater to a particular subject best. That is how you set the roster. So therefore, I owe a lot to cricket, my first love, and uh, you are all Marathis. Cricket closed in your veins. So those who are young, continue playing cricket. Those who have not touched the cricket bat for years, I urge you to return to the cricketing field once again. I've taken much of your time. I pray to God so that all of you Stay blessed and healthy. And uh, let me tell you, for the sake of Bombay High Court, whenever my services are required, I'm always there.
जय हिंद जय महाराष्ट्र Thank you, Honorable Justice Deepankar Dutt, sir. Now I request Vice Chairman Bar Council of Maharashtra and Goa, Dr. Uday Varaji, sir, to propose vote of thanks. Here, because I know, let us save the time so that we can get maximum time we can spend with the Honorable uh, both the judges who have come here, all uh, distinguished guests, all invitees, all BCI members. Uh, though almost five minutes are given to me, but uh, looking at the time and the looking at the clock, I think uh, instead of taking the names of everybody, permit me to just mention the designations. There are uh, members who have come from uh, the different part of uh, the entire country. So all BCI members, including the uh, chairman, vice chairman, executive chairman, we are really grateful you have graced this occasion. There are uh, different uh, local bars who have, uh, who have sent their representatives. I could see the Explanate uh, Court Bar Association. I could see the City Civil Court Bar Association. I have, the Family Court Bar is also here. Then Bandra Bar is also here. The Consumer Court Advocate Association is also here. Apart from Madhav Bar has also come. All uh, their presence, presence of all these the representatives goes to show that uh, they have come to meet the uh, today's guest, uh, Justice Dipankar Datta. Our own uh, Bombay, Bar, uh, Bombay Bars, namely the Advocate Association of Western India and the Bombay Bar Association, Incorporated Law Society, they have also sent their office bearers. We are really grateful for your uh, kind presence. Apart from that, uh, we are having several senior advocates who have come here. Pardon me for uh, not naming the individual senior advocates looking at the time constraint, but we are really thankful because of your active support. The Bar Council of Maharashtra and Goa is uh, performing our different duties which are provided under the scheme of the Advocate Act. There is a uh, Nasik Bar Association who have also uh, sent their delegates uh, uh, the president is also here. Nagpur High Court Bar Association, they have also sent their delegates. The president is also here. That goes to show that the entire state of Maharashtra is here. And apart from that, Justice Karnik has come from Goa. Though he is uh, from Bombay Bar, he is posted at uh, Goa. So therefore, entire Maharashtra and Goa is here. All the honorable judges, sorry, I could not name individual judges for want of time, all uh, spouses of the respective honorable judges, we are really thankful. Uh, you are the persons who have uh, stood uh, behind the Bar Council of Maharashtra Goa in last uh, several years. The chairman of the Bar Council of uh, India has uh, certified that uh, this is one of the pioneer institution, this is one of the leader and the real credit goes to all those honorable judges who have guided us all uh, throughout in this entire journey. The chairman of the Bar Council of uh, India who has come at a midnight, rather post midnight from Patna, we are really grateful for our Manan Kumar Mishraji. The acting chief justice who has guided us all throughout and apart from that, he will be here with us and he will be supporting all our different activities. Very recently, we have gone and met uh, the acting chief justice about the uh, e-filing issues and he was very kind and his response was such that the another event which uh, the Bar Council of Maharashtra and Goa has uh, undertaken that will also be successful. For all those youngsters, I must tell you, the two uh, flagship uh, uh, events uh, were conducted in the recent past and we are implementing that entire project in near future, namely the e-filing and facility center in all courts. The uh, acting chief justice has assured his uh, entire cooperation for this uh, entire uh, e-filing and facility center. 
distribution of civil and criminal manual that will be also done in the recent uh, in the immediate uh, uh, future also now coming back to the two dignitaries from the supreme court justice oak no words to say anything about uh, his uh, support for this entire our institution whenever whatever is required we are uh, approaching justice oak and uh, he is kind enough in resolving all those uh, issues and he is giving a guidance and he is telling us this is the thing which is required these are the concepts which are required for the next generation sir we are really grateful you came and graced this occasion and now the last one and i am feeling very proud that i received the first man of the match prize in the cricket match from the justice dipankar datta sir it's a really feeling very proud moment and i must tell you justice karnik was also there for that uh, prize distribution ceremony i kept that ball in my drawer in the office as a memory which was given by justice uh, dipankar datta justice karnik along with the momento to my team sir you came here you are really a part of our entire bombay high court we are really grateful and uh, we are uh, sure that there will be many more occasions to invite justice dipankar datta in uh, the entire state of maharashtra and goa with this uh, there are two more announcement one there are two halls for the purpose of uh, having a lunch the honorable judges their spouses and uh, the senior advocates they can come in the next hall that is mean for uh, that function the second hall is the next building that is sachivale gymkhana all others are requested to uh, join us uh, for a lunch in uh, uh, sachivale gymkhana and the last thing let us give a big hand to justice uh, girish kulkarni the birthday boy and uh, and the announcement was uh, made uh, around 40 minutes back and the bar council is uh, prompt enough we have arranged for a cake also for justice kulkarni so with this i am returning the mic to the anchor thank you very much thank you very much uh, vice chairman sir uh, with the permission of the honorable chief nigesh of today's function i request the function to be closed for the day नेशनल एंथम विल बी प्लेड भारत भाग्य विधाता सिंह गुजरात मराठा हिमाचल